Hello friends here I am with next part of this story. I hope you all like the video and subscribe to my channel. So let's start the video with summary. After being brought to the world of the Olympians Naruto discovers he is the son of a goddess and therefore half blood. But Susa's master bolt goes missing and Naruto joins Percy Jackson into returning the bolt to the king of the gods before time runs out. Chapter 5 The light from an open window shone brightly on Naruto's face causing his eyes to flicker before they groggily and slowly opened. Just like seven months ago he found himself staring up at a ceiling he did not recognize. The events of the previous night began to make its way back to his memory. Grover being a satyr from the old Greek times, being attacked by the Minotaur before he and Percy managed to kill it, Sally gone and being found by that raven-haired girl. He blushed slightly at the memory of the girl before he heard a voice coming from next to him. He looked over to see Percy lying on a bed similar to him with a blonde-haired girl feeding him some weird liquid-looking substance. Damn it what was stolen? He heard her mutter as she put the spoon into Percy's mouth. Your guess is as good as mine he said catching the girl off guard and making her turn around to face him with a startled look on her face. The girl looked about the same age as Percy and was very pretty. She had tan skin with long blonde hair that curled at the back. She had gray eyes and wore an orange shirt that said camp half blood on it along with a blue skirt that stopped just above her knees and blue sneakers. Whoa don't scare me like that she said slightly startled at hearing Naruto's voice and watched him as he began to sit up. Naruto felt a little stiff as he sat up but his ribs didn't hurt anymore so he could only presume the faults had healed him by now. He began to stretch a little getting the knots out of his joints. How are you up? You shouldn't be awake for another day at least, let alone fully healed she said in surprise. I have always been a fast healer he said looking at the girl. Is he going to be okay? He asked nodding over to Percy. Oh erm um, yeah he will be fine, he just needs to rest, he should be up by tomorrow. That's good he said as he rubbed his eyes before he extended his hand out to the girl. I'm Naruto Uzumaki, it's nice to meet you. The girl looked at him slightly as if she was studying him before a smile made its way to her face and shook his hand. I'm Annabeth Chase, it's nice to meet you too. So erm um, can you tell me where I am? He asked looking around. You're at Camp Half-Blood. Come on I'll take you to Chiron and Mr. D they will be better at explaining everything to you she said before leading Naruto out the room. You're in the medic wing at the moment. You and your friend were brought in late last night. Caused a bit of a ruckus she said as Naruto looked all around as he saw Greek lettering all about the wall and on the door. Yet somehow she he found he could read it pretty perfectly. Yeah sorry about that. We would have been quieter if Pacifay's son didn't try to turn us into a shish kebab. You know your Greek history she said looking slightly impressed. I was told to brush up on my Greek history over the past months. My mom wanted me to learn it when I arrived in New York. She sounds smart Annabeth said. What's she like? Naruto shrugged. No idea. I have never met her. She has seen me but I haven't seen her. Oh what about your dad? She asked pushing for more question. He felt as if she was interrogating him but he felt comfortable around her so he didn't really mind answering. He died the day I was born. I never met him either. Oh I'm sorry to hear that. Don't worry about it. I'm used to it he said getting a nod from the girl. Annabeth meanwhile was taking glances back at Naruto and was studying his features. He has the blonde hair and the tan skin and he said he never met his mom. But the eyes are all wrong. I wonder whose he is, she thought. Plus are those whisker marks on his cheeks? When the two made it outside Naruto looked around and felt slightly stumped and let his mouth open slightly as he scanned the place. From what he saw the landscape was dotted with buildings that looked like ancient Greek architecture. There was an open air pavilion, a large amphitheater, a circular arena that had a lot of training dummies scattered over it with a few kids hacking away at them with swords. There were white marble columns sparkling in the sun. In a nearby sandpit, a dozen high school age kids and satyrs played volleyball. Canoes glided across a small lake. Kids in bright orange t-shirts like Grovers were chasing each other around a cluster of cabins nestled in the woods. Some shot targets at an archery range. Others rode horses down a wooded trail while some flew on horses with wings. This place is incredible. It even more amazing than the Leaf Village he said getting a curious look from Annabeth. I'll explain later. She nodded and accepted the answer for now before they headed over to a large building bigger than the rest that had an open porch on it and there were two people sitting at a small table playing some kind of game. 
When he neared he saw the first guy was in a wheelchair and immediately recognized. Mr. Brunner? Naruto said surprised causing the men had to look over to him before he smiled. Naruto my boy it's good to see you're up he said wheeling over towards them. I was not expecting you to be up until tomorrow. You heal quickly. Yeah I get that a lot he said shaking Mr. Brunner hands. You must have questions. Come take a seat he said pointing to a chair next to him. Plus here I am known as Chiron. Mr. Brunner was just an alias. Naruto nodded before the now named Chiron looked over to his right and shouted Grover come here please. Naruto looked over and saw Grover sprinting towards him and had a shoebox in his hand. His running with his goat legs made him as fast as a track star since he left a small trail of dust behind him. Naruto he said putting the box down before giving the blonde a hug. It good to see you up and about. Thanks Grover. Good to see you're okay. You gave you quite a scare when the car went over. Naruto Chiron said as Naruto took a seat around the table. I would like to introduce you to the camp director Mr. D. Naruto looked over and looked at the other man who was sat around the table with a coke can in his hand. He wore a leopard print shirt and had messy black hair and was a little on the chubby side and is rocking the bearded look. He looked like someone who coached a peewee soccer team. Right right well welcome to camp I guess Mr. D said with very little care in his voice. Thank you for bringing him over Annabeth Chiron said before Annabeth gave a nod and jumped off the porch and ran off. Naruto watched her go before he turned his head around towards Chiron and Mr. D. So far I'm at a camp that is God knows where. Last night I found out my friend was a setter and we were attacked MR half man half bull right? He said getting a nod from Chiron and Grover and a burp from Mr. D. Okay just give it to me straight. Don't give me any watered down version. Just tell me what I need to know. I can take it he said getting another nod from Chiron. Very well. To start off Naruto you are not an ordinary person. You have come to believe that you are immortal. Just a regular person just like everyone else however that is untrue and far from the truth. You are what is known as a half-blood or as you may know it from Latin class as a demigod. The Greek gods from the old stories and from what are believed to be myths are very real and still exist to this very day. Over the years they move from country to country, continent to continent until they eventually wound up in America. From time to time they come down to earth and as you so delicately put it on the trip to the museum, they hook up with mortals Chiron said getting a chuckle all round even from Mr. D. This camp is a place where many demigods just like yourself come to train, meet other demigods and form close friendships. From time to time even a quest is issued though one has not been issued for some time. For many camp Half-Blood is a place that many have come to call their home do not being able to live in the mortal worlds due to their scent which attract monsters just like the one you encountered last night or they simply don't have anyone to go back to. Naruto sat there taking it all in. If he had been told this about a year ago, right now he would probably be jumping up the walls rubbing it in people's faces and saying how awesome he was. Thankfully now that he had matured he simply nodded his head and kept his surprise and shock inside. Whoa Naruto said leaning back on his chair putting his hand through his hair. That's a lot to take in I know this is a big change and it will be a little strange at first but you will get used to it and you will adjust. Many here were just like you and given time they settled in and got used to it. I'm sure you shall too. So you're basically saying the old Greek gods of old really do exist and lie there in America and in the son of one of them? Pretty much Grover answered, right. In that case since one of my parents is a god or goddess do you know which one? He asked, I'm afraid not. We won't know until your Olympian parent claims you, which could honestly be at any given time. However I have to admit you are taking this rather well I'm used to weird stuff. It just seems to follow me. And about my godly parent, I think it's my mommy said getting looks from everyone else. Why do you think that? Grover asked leaning in. Well since you were honest with me and told me all of this I should be honest with you and tell you things about me neither of you know he said towards Chiron and Grover and getting odd looks from all three men. Have you ever heard of a place called the Elemental Nation? He asked getting surprised looks from Chiron and Mr. D while Grover just looked plain confused. We are aware of the other world. From time to time we gods visit their world but it's awful rare. How do you know of it? Mr. D asked suspiciously. Well you see wait as gods? Are you telling me you're a god? Naruto asked I'm Mr. D. Is it that surprising? 
This is just the look I'm going for while I'm here he said before he summoned a glass of wine on the table and was about to drink it before Chiron spoke up. Mr. D your restrictions Chiron said getting rolled eyes from Mr. D. Right right forgot. Father really enjoys punishing me he said before it disappeared. Naruto saw the wine and the father commented. It clicked in his head and who this guy was. You're the wine god aren't you? You're Dionysus he said getting a nod from Mr. D who also looked a little impressed. That is correct. Nice to see not all the demigods that first arrive here are idiots. Er thanks I think. You were saying Naruto before we trailed off Chiron spoke. Oh right I was telling you about the elemental nations right? He said getting a nod from the man. Well the reason I know about it is because I'm from the elemental nations he said as Chiron got a gobsmacked look on his face while Mr. D looked very surprised. How do I know you're telling the truth? He asked before Naruto smirked a little. He stuck out his hand and formed a Rasengan causing both Grover and Chiron to gasp at the sight of it while Mr. D inspected. Yep that's Chakra alright he said getting an amused look on his face. Now this is a first. We have never had a demigod from the elemental nations before in the camp. Really I'm the first? He said getting a nod from Mr. D. Since those in the elemental nations are capable of using Chakra they already become quite powerful people in their own right. Also since monsters don't to go to that world, they would never pick up their scent so they would not need to come here. However I would like to know how you got to this world. Well my mom found me and she brought me over. She hated the way I was treated by the village and brought me to this world. Which is why you believe your mom is a goddess. Chiron said getting a confirmed nod from Naruto. That would make sense since only a god or goddess has the power to cross worlds. This pretty much confirms Naruto's Olympian parent is one of the goddesses. Hold on. What is this place you're talking about? What's Chakra and what was that blue orb thing Naruto just made? Grover asked since he was confused about what they were talking about. So for the next 5 minutes Chiron filled Grover in while Naruto added any extra info if Chiron missed anything out. By the end of it Grover was left sat in his seat with a gobsmacked expression on his face. To think a world like that exists. Who knew he said slumping back. Now you know how I felt when I came to this world Naruto said chuckling a little. Why were you brought to this world then? I don't quite understand why your mother brought you to this world if that world never got any monsters. You said she did not like how the village you? Naruto rubbed his neck a little sheepishly. Well now that is another little confession I need to tell you about. Mr. D, Chiron has either of you heard of a creature called the Nine-Tailed Fox? He asked now getting odd glances from the two. I have. The Nine-Tailed Fox or Kawabi for short is a giant fox-like creature as tall as a New York skyscraper that is effectively a giant mass of chakra. It's so powerful it said it could destroy mountains and cause tsunamis with a flick of its tail. From what my father Zeus says it could be as powerful as Typhon. What do you ask? Mr. D asked as he studied Naruto's expression on his face and the way he was nervously moving around in his seat. It was then that Mr. D figured it out. You're a Jinchuriki aren't you? He said looking at Naruto who gave him a nervous nod. Mr. D then got up from his seat and stood in front of Naruto. Let me see the seal he said getting a surprised look from Naruto but quickly complied. He lifted up his shirt and Chanel chakra through his body and after a few seconds the seal appeared on his stomach which got curious looks from Chiron and Grover. Mr. D however got down on one knee and started looking over the seal and was muttering things that Naruto couldn't hear. I take it you have met another Jinchuriki before then? Naruto asked. Only once a long time ago. He was a young boy when I met him though. Maybe a little younger than you. His name was Rashi and he carried the four tails. The boy seemed nice enough but he was not treated all that well due to his burden which unfortunately is a given due to carrying one of the beasts Mr. D said before he finished looking over the seal. That is quite the seal. During one of my trips to the elemental nations I got a little interested in the art for sealing and studied it a little. Well I'm no seal master like those in the elemental nations or like my sister Athena. I can spot a good seal and this is one of the best I have seen. Whoever did it was a genius. It's something that could make Athena jealous over he muttered before he got up and sat back down on his chair. The person that made it was the fourth Hukut who was my father Naruto said also returning to his seat. I see Mr. D said. I will have to keep an eye on you since we have never had a shinobi let alone a Jinchuriki demigod at camp before. 
I doubt she will have any episodes since the seal is keeping the beast at bay and seems to be able to channel its energy into you when needed but nevertheless I will need to keep a close eye on you to be on the safe side. We done. Tini the giant fox terrorizing the place Naruto nodded in understanding while Mr. D explained to Chiron what Jinchi Riki were before he looked over at Grover. Grover what's in the box? He said pointing to the cardboard box on Grover lap. Alright I almost forgot he said picking it up and handing it to Naruto. This belongs to you. Naruto looked at Grover curiously before he turned his attention to the box. He lifted up the lid and was a little surprised to see the minotaur horn that he kicked off the beast sign there. I went back to the site where you and Percy defeated MR Harry and Scary and collected them. Percy has the other one. They are spoils of war, trophies if you will. It's to show that you defeated it and it shows your strength. Wow that's great. Thanks Grover he said patting the satyr on the shoulder. Well it's the least I could do since you and Percy got me here. I should have protected you but I failed. Grover's head looked down but Chiron clasped him on the shoulder. You did a good job Grover. That is two more you have bought to safety. It should have been five he whispered causing Chiron to get a sad look on his face. Grover why don't you take Naruto on a tour of the camp. I'm sure he's eager to see what is around here Chiron suggested. Sure he said getting up and motioning Naruto to follow. Hey Chiron Naruto asked. Since your name is Chiron I don't suppose you're the Urmuth centaur from the old legends? That I am my boy. I was given immortality by the gods so that I could continue training the generation of heroes. Oh wow Urm okay Naruto said a little flabbergasted. Not only did he just meet the wine god but his teacher turned out to be a centaur that was over 2000 years old. I'll see you guys later then Naruto said before quickly asking Chiron whether he could look after the minotaur horn while he was on the tour which the man said was fine. With Naruto and Grover Naruto quickly caught up to Grover as he began the tour. Well first the building we were just at is known as a big house. Basically that is the headquarters of the camp and where you will most likely find Chiron or Mr. D he said getting a nod from Naruto. As Grover showed Naruto around the blonde hair teen saw many kid around his age and a few that were older and younger running around all wearing their bright orange shirts. Some were running around with sword, bow or other assorted weapons in their hands. Others have maps or books while others carried around tools. Many of the other campers glanced at Naruto when he walked past mainly to see what the new camper was like. They had already heard about how Naruto and Percy defeated the Minotaur during the night. While some were impressed, others were a little jealous that they got the opportunity and they didn't. Grover then led them through the giant strawberry field. Naruto took a long whiff at the area and found himself sighing happily. The place smelled heavenly. With fresh cut grass and the smell of strawberries in the air it made Naruto want to fall to the ground and take nap. All around there were satyrs and other children who were tending to the strawberry fields. Grover explained that the demigod children of Demeter took up the task of keeping the strawberry field in good condition along with satyrs playing their magical songs to help them grow. Not only that but also the strawberries helped pay some funds towards the camp. It might have been a secret camp for demigods but it still needed money from the mortal world. So Grover how did you get picked to go find me and Percy? Naruto asked striking up conversation with Grover as they walked through the huge strawberry fields. Well satyrs are sent out into the mortal world to find demigods and then bring them back to camp once the time was right. Going to Yancey was kind of my second chance. Second chance? You did this before? He said getting a solemn looking nod from Grover. Yeah a couple of years ago but I'd rather not talk about it. Let's just say I didn't do my job properly and there was a casualty. Anyway as I was saying I went to Yancey and then I found Percy. Originally I thought it was only Percy there but then I discovered you too. That's when I called Chiron and he came to Yancey as well. Why did Chiron come over? Was there something that matter? It wasn't necessarily a bad thing, it's just you and Percy were each giving off a very strong scent. It was much stronger than other normal half-bloods. Though yours may be due to being a shinobi half-blood. Man that's weird. I still can't believe a world like that exists. You will have to tell me more about it sometime he said getting a nod from Naruto. Once they exited the strawberry field they went past an archery range that had a large group of children varying from ages wielding bows and arrows shooting at the targets. They seemed pretty good since most were hitting just around the center. Over there is the canoeing lake. We have canoe races from time to time he said pointing towards the giant lake that had small dock located on the edge with a row of canoes and smaller looking boats around it. 
and over there is the stables, he said pointing over to a large stable just over by the hill. That's where the horses and pegasuses are, he said as Grover saw it had caught Naruto's attention. However it was not the stables or the mention of pegasuses that caught his attention but the girl who was walking towards it. When Naruto took a good look the girl had long raven black hair and was wearing a skirt similar to Annabeth and had an orange tank top on. That's the girl from last night he said but just as he was about to head over Grover caught him and dragged him off. Come on Naruto much to see he said getting a whine of displeasure from Naruto before the blonde gave in. He looked over and the girl had disappeared into the stables. They continued looking around the camp with Grover next showing the amphitheater and then a giant wooden arena. Grover explained that the arena was where they had practice fights and special games while the amphitheater was where they had big sing-alongs and told stories. Naruto thought that was something he could enjoy. Oh here we are Grover said as they exited the strawberry field and Naruto found himself staring at an assortment of cabins that were all in a U-shape. They were cabins of all shapes and sizes and all looked much different from one another. Right in the center of the U-shape was a stone-lined fire pit. Sitting next to the pit was a girl who looked around 8 years old. She had brown hair with a small bandana covering her hair and wore a brown dress that went down to her knees. She turned and looked at him with a pair of warm chocolate-colored eyes before she gave him a warm smile. When she looked at him he saw her mouth a few words to him. It looked like she said I'll see you soon before she got up and stood in the fire before she disappeared leaving a slightly shocked Naruto staring at where she once sat. He was taken out of it when he heard Grover's voice. These are the cabins where you will stay. Each cabin represents one of the twelve Olympians and when you get claimed by your parent you will stay in their cabin. But for now you will stay in cabin 11 the Hermes cabin since you have not been claimed yet. That's where everyone has not been claimed go he said pointing over towards a cabin that looked the most like an actual cabin. Naruto stared at all the cabins. There was one that had tomato vines growing on the side of it with a grass made roof. Another was bright pink with pink frilly curtains showing through the windows. Then there was one that looked like it was made of solid gold. It hurt just to look at it due to the sun bouncing of it. Why are so many empty? He asked pointing towards a select few that looked great but he could see they were bearing empty on the inside. Oh well Hira is the goddess of marriage so she doesn't have affairs with mortals. Therefore she has no demigod children. It's just there is an honorary thing. The Zeus cabin won't have any due to the big three. Zeus, Poseidon and Hades making a pact for no more demigod children due to some bad past events. The same with the Poseidon cabin he said pointing towards three cabins 1, 2 and 3. Cabin 1 was a marble building looking like a mausoleum, with heavy columns. The doors were made of bronze and had symbols of lightning bolts on the side. Cabin 2 was similar to Cabin 1 but had peacock-like design on the walls and columns while Cabin 3 was a low building made that had walls made of some kind of grey-looking rock material and had seashells plastered all around it. On the front door there was a large symbol of a trident on it. How come Hades or Hestia D.O.E.S.N. T have a cabin? He asked. Well Hades is not really welcome up on Olympus so they didn't see a need for a cabin here. Hestia took an oath to remain a virgin like Artemis and Athena plus she is one of the friendly gods. She doesn't see the need for a cabin since she has no children. Though I'm surprised you asked that, many forget about Lady Hestia which is a shame. She truly is the most likable of the gods. Naruto nodded at Grover's words and looked at the assortment of cabins. However despite how amazing they looked it was the only other empty cabin that caught Naruto's eye and to him looked like the most beautiful of the twelve cabins. Naruto slowly walked towards the cabin recognized as Cabin 8. The cabin was silver in color and had silver curtains showing through the windows. On the outside there was intricate vine-like design as well as animals like stags and wolves decorated on them. On the front door there was a symbol of a bow in the crescent moon. Naruto got closer to the cabin. He reached his hand out and was about to touch the cabin before Grover's hand shot onto his wrist. I seriously would not do that if I were you. That's Lady Artemis's cabin. She hates all men and is one of the three virgin goddesses, so I would not touch or go near this cabin unless you have death wish. Lady Artemis has a habit of turning males into jackalopes. That sucks. So the cabin just sits here like the other empty cabins? Naruto asked feeling a little disappointed that such a beautiful cabin would get no one to live in it. Actually when the hunters, Lady Artemis's group of all-female warriors visits the camp they stay in her cabin. Since she has no kids it would only make sense that they stay in here. Though they're not overly friendly with the campers here and they prefer to stay within their group. 
They rarely come here though. But when they do there usually ends up being some sort of fight or disagreement between them and they can remind me not to get on their bad side Naruto said with Grover give a chuckle. Well that's about it man, that's the gist of the camp. I should get back to Chiron and then check in on Percy. Naruto nodded. Sure I think I might keep looking around if that's okay. You know get a lay of the land. Sure that's no problem. I'll see you later. Find me if you have any questions or anything Grover said before he sprinted away back through the strawberry fields. As Grover ran if Naruto looked around the area wrapping his head around everything he had heard today. Cross dimensions, gods, monsters. He may have come from a world full of shinobi that could wield the elements but even this was a little shocking to Naruto. It was definitely going to take the blonde a bit of time to adjust. But he adjusted well coming to this world so he knew he would be fine. He turned his head and once again he found himself staring at cabin 8. There was something about that cabin that made him feel drawn to it. It was just like what he felt back in the museum with the statue to Artemis. It was a little mind boggling for Naruto. Hey let go. Naruto was brought out for thinking when he heard shouting that he thought came from a girl and it sounded close by. He looked around before he saw just at the edge of the strawberry field two boys wearing blood red shirts with camo jackets had boxed in a younger girl who looked around 11. All that Naruto could make out from her was that she had brown hair. When he saw them snatch the basket the girl was carrying and put it high in the air out of her reach Naruto started to walk over with the intention of teaching both boys a lesson. Give it back. Those strawberries are supposed to be sent off in a couple of days the girl said but the two boys who towered above her just snickered and were using their sizes to intimidate her. Both boys looks around 13 to 14 but were a very chunky looking. Naruto couldn't tell whether it was from too much muscle or too much fat. But both had baby like faces. You think we care weakling? Why don't you try and fight us? Maybe we will give you them back then ugly number one said causing them both to laugh and the girl's eyes began to water. Hey ugly Naruto called causing the three to turn and look at him, who the hell are you blondie? Can't you use we're busy or you looking for trouble? Busy huh? All I see is two overgrown chimps picking on a little girl. If you want to fight someone so bad, how about you fight me? Unless you're too chicken. Chicken? Chicken? Who the hell are you calling chicken ugly number two said as he ran towards Naruto. He brought his fist with the intention of pummeling Naruto but Naruto simply sidestepped. Man you're slow he said before delivering a strong punch to the gut of ugly number two before getting behind him and giving the kid a giant wedgie and pulled his underpants all the way across his face. Ugly number two started running around in a circle before he ran into a tree and knocked himself out. Naruto then turned around to ugly number one. How about you? You want to go? He said doing the come on sign with his hands. But just before ugly number one could do anything Naruto appeared and whacked him on the back of the head before kneeing him in the gut. However when he hit him and the boy went down the basket in his hands that had the strawberries went flying into the air. Luckily Naruto caught the basket and as the strawberries fell back to the ground he began catching them back in the basket before the basket was full again. He turned around to face the young girl who was gaping like a wet fish at him. I believe these are yours he said handing them over with the girl receiving them with a small blush on her face. T thank you. That was really nice of you. I have not seen you around before. Is this your first year at camp? Yes it is. I just got here last night. I just finished the tour of the place when I say you were in a bit of trouble. I hate bullies, especially when big idiots like them pick on girls. Just makes my blood boil. Yes those Ares kids are just a bunch of bullies and I doubt they will try and mess with you after what you did to them. I'm Katie Gardner daughter of Demeter. It's my first year too. It's nice to meet you. I'm Naruto Uzumaki son of unknown he said making her giggle a little. He got a better look at her. She had leaf green eyes and mild tan skin. She wore the usual orange shirt but had a dark green skirt that went just above her knees and wore green converses. How long have you been claimed if this is your first year? Naruto asked wondering how long it usually took since he would now be eating for when his mother would claim him. I was only claimed a few days ago. Apparently it varies from different gods but I was claimed pretty quickly. That's pretty often from what my siblings tell me since Demeter claims her kids pretty quickly. I'm sure you will be claimed soon. Katie a voice called and both turned to see a boy halfway down in the strawberry field shout to her. He was telling her they had to take the strawberries they picked to the big house to get ready for shipping. I have to go. Thank you for helping me again. I would really like to be your friend since you helped me. 
I'll see you soon Naruto she said giving him a quick hug before running off swaying her basket full of strawberries. No problem he said smiling. He felt like he just made a new friend in camp which made him feel pretty good inside since currently his only friend were really Percy and Grover. So he spent the next couple of hours looking around the camp, making sure he knew where everything was. He went down to the beach only for a group of women with elfish feature to flirt with him. It made him feel pretty uncomfortable so he hightailed it out of there leaving the girls there a little disappointed. As the sun began to set among the camp he had walked up onto the hill and sat underneath the giant tree and watched as the sun began to set. The orange-yellow colors from the sunset lit showed the camp in a beautiful light and reflected and glimmered of the ocean and rivers. I shall try and get hammocks set up here he thought as the day slowly began to change to night. He heard a conghorn bellow out but he didn't think anything of it. Here are you are Naruto. Naruto whipped his head around to see Chiron galloping over now in his centaur form. Naruto had to whistle in amazement. His horse half was white in color with a few scar that in various places on his horse half. No doubt from training past heroes and fighting in battles. I trust Grover gave you the tour? He asked getting a nod of confirmation from Naruto. That's good. Come the horn that went off was to let people know dinner was ready. We are heading over to the dining pavilion. That's where Mr. D will introduce you to everyone. You and Percy have caused quite the stir and many are interested in meeting you. Yeah I bet he muttered to himself as he and Chiron made their way down the hill. Chapter 6 Chiron and Naruto neared the giant outdoor dining pavilion which they could both see and hear was already filled with all the campers. Naruto could hear people talking, laughing, burping, and even a few playful arguments. So Grover mentioned I would be staying at the Hermes cabin he said striking up conversation with veteran centaur. That's correct. It's where all the unclaimed demigods go since Lord Hermes is happy to look after those who are unclaimed which makes him a favorite and well-respected member of the 12 Olympians. Well that's good of him. How long do you have to wait to be claimed? Chiron had a somber look cross his face. Oh well it varies. Some get claimed straight away within a few days, some maybe a few months, some a few years but some unfortunately never get claimed. Unfortunately not all demigods are recognized by their godly parent and are simply forgotten about. Then why would they have them if they weren't going to at least claim them, show them they at least care for them? Well that is a question I think many want to answer but in my experience it's best not to ask. The gods can be very temperamental when they want to be. Fair enough Naruto said. The two lapsed into a quick silence before Naruto asked another question. Can I ask why does Hera have an honorary cabin when Lady Hestia doesn't? From what I have heard about Hestia it's that she is a favorite and likable goddess. Shouldn't she have a cabin in her honor as well? Naruto asked. Chiron sighed. Well it is quite unfortunate really. Lady Hestia was once one of the twelve Olympians but when Dionysus came along it's caused a bit of an uproar. She willingly gave up her seat to him when she saw how far things were beginning to escalate and to avoid a war happening. But slowly over time people just began to forget about her. Even some of her family rarely notice her these days. That's really really sad Naruto thought. He felt some kind of connection with Hestia in some sort of weird way. He guessed it was perhaps because they were both rarely looked upon by others and were not really cared much for. He hated that when he was growing up so he could only imagine how Hestia had it living for over 3000 years. They arrived at the dining pavilion but just as Naruto was about to head over Chiron put a hand on his shoulder and looked down at him. Naruto Mr. D told me about the hardship that a Jinchuriki has had to face and I just want you to know that you won't have to face those kinds of hardships here in the camp welcomes you with open arms. Do not feel like you need to hide yourself from people here. If or when you decide to tell people about the fox know that although they may be a little wary of you, they will accept you. They all know what it's like to be looked down on and we all consider each other friends and family here. So know that when you want to tell everyone we will accept you for who you are. Hearing Chiron telling him that he would be accepted here made Naruto slightly near up before he quickly wiped a straw tear away. Thank you Chiron, you don't know how much I appreciate hearing that. Chiron gave him a kind smile before the two continued walking in. When Mr. D introduces you to everyone he will let them know that you come from the elemental nations but will keep the fox secret until you want to tell them. Naruto nodded and the two headed towards it. The first thing Naruto noticed when he walked in was how many campers they were. There must have been around 200 all varying from different ages. They all sat at specific stone picnic tables. One was masked with a huge number of people that was beginning to overflow with people on it. 
Another made Naruto blush when he saw that all the people sitting at the table were incredibly pretty. They all had perfect skins and all wore makeup, some more than others. The girls were the definition of girly girls, even the boys. At another table he saw Annabeth sitting with a group that all had similar features to her. The blonde hair and the tan skin with gray eyes. She spotted him looking over and gave him a small wave which he returned. But then he noticed there was about four tables that were completely unoccupied which to Naruto looked like a complete waste. He had a feeling this was like the cabins. Every child of a certain god or goddess goes to a specific table. The overcrowded one had to be the Hermes table and guessed many of them there were kids who had not been claimed yet. He then looked around to see if he could find the raven-haired girl but with all the people in the room and no not exactly recognizing the face properly since his vision was a little blurry he struggled to find her. When they walked in the commotion all seemed to stop and they all looked over towards him and began to whisper, Hey that's him. One of the two that be the you know I wonder if he is a good fighter. He must be if what we heard was right. Right? Look those whiskers on his face. He looked so cute hot damn Naruto blushed at the last two comments since he was not exactly used to those kind of comments being made to him. Luke could you come over here for a second Chiron called out which made a one of the boys from the cramped table walk over. The boy was a lot older than everyone else he had seen so far, around 19 at most. He had sandy blonde hair with light blue eyes with very elfish like features and a pointy face. But the most notable feature was a long white scar that went down his right cheek. Look this is Naruto Uzumaki one of the new campers who arrived last night. I'll leave him with you Chiron said before he trotted over to where Mr. D was sitting. Well it's nice to meet you Naruto. Odd name if you don't mind me sing. It sounds kind of Japanese for an American. I'm Luke son of Hermes and the head of the Hermes cabin. It's nice to meet you he said shaking Luke's hand. Yeah I get that a lot. My name means Maelstrom and if you ever look it up don't believe what anyone tells you. It does not mean fish kick he said getting a chuckle from Luke. I'll try to remember that he said before he led Naruto over to the Hermes table. Make room guys he said causing the table to shift a little as Naruto took a seat next to Luke. Well welcome to Camp Half-Blood. We have to admit we are all quite impressed by your action with the other boy last night. Defeating the bull man is quite the achievement, especially from those who have not had any training. Well I wouldn't say I didn't have any training exactly but I have found a bit of teamwork can go far. True I guess Luke said not looking to convinced but Naruto shrugged it off. Ah uh, it looks like Mr. D is about to speak. Mr. D got up from his seat rather reluctantly if the face he was giving was any indication. He cracked his knuckle before he stood in front of everyone as a whole pavilion went quiet to hear what he was about to say. Alright brats listen up because I will only say this once he said in a bored tone. As you all know we had two new arrivals last night. One is with us tonight while the other is still on Kunis and is healing. I'm sure you have all been wondering whether the rumor about them defeating the Minotaur was true. Well I'm here to clarify that it is indeed true. That caused many to begin whispering before MR gave them a look that quickly shut them all up. He clicked his finger and the shoebox containing Naruto's Minotaur horn appeared in front of him. Naruto opened it up and many gasped a little when they saw the horn knowing now full well that it was true. Many on the Hermes table marveled at it while Naruto could see that over at one of the other tables that was filled with big and burly kids they were looking at him with a bit of jealousy in their eyes. Don't worry Luke said whispering to him. That's just the Aries table. They are probably just mad that they didn't get a chance to fight it he said getting a nod from Naruto before Mr. D began speaking again. The one who joined us tonight is Naruto Uzumaki he said which caused many to whisper. The whispers were a little odd since they were saying whether it was his real name or if Mr. D was just messing with names again like he always was. It was quickly cleared up when Luke stood up and told them it was his actual name. Naruto asked what that was about but Luke just waved it off. Anyway Mr. Uzumaki is not like normal demigods and is quite a bit different from all of you he said causing them all to glance at him with curiosity. By different I mean he is from a different world. That immediately shut everyone up and all began to listen intently. Unknown to many there is a separate dimension, an alternate world if you will known as the elemental nations. There the landscape is completely different and they have their own history that dates back thousands of years if not longer. There they have warriors known as shinobi or as you might all know them as ninja. They are a part of everyday society and shinobis are mortals who can perform amazing feats by using an energy known as chakra. It lets them have the ability to bend the elements. 
They are masters of hand-to-hand -hand combat and swordsmanship among others. Their society is different from the one you all know in this world. Naruto is the first demigod shinobi to ever come to this camp and therefore please welcome him with open arms Mr. D said dryly before he turned around and sat back down. For the next few minutes the whole room was silent as every camper had their eyes directed towards Naruto who was once again beginning to shift uncomfortably in his seat. Many looked gulpsmacked while he couldn't help but notice the table Annabeth was sitting at all looked like Christmas had just come early. And Naruto is that true? Luke asked voicing the question everyone wanted answered. Naruto just nodded his head confirming everything Mr. D just said was true. Do you think you could show us a shinobi trick? Luke asked her I'm sure he said standing up as everyone turned in their seat to get a good look at what he was about to do. He quickly thought about what to do before he decided on walking up one of the stone pillars. He applied chakra before he put one foot up against one of the pillar and began walking vertically up it. It immediately caused everyone to make a little gasp. Whoa looks at that he's like Spider-Man I wonder what else he could do? Hearing the other last voice Naruto jumped down all the way from the ceiling and stood in front of everyone. I can also do this he said making a quick hand sign before he erupted in a cloud of smoke. When the smoke cleared many gasped and fell out their seat when they saw a carbon copy of Mr. D standing where Naruto used to be. All the campers were moving their hands back and forth between the real Mr. D and the copy. Mr. D looked it over before nodding at how well the copy was. So Naruto then made another hand sign and he quickly turned back. When he changed back he was immediately swarmed by the other campers all wanting to ask him question about his world, how he came to their world and what other tricks could he do. He swore he even heard some ask whether he had a girlfriend. Luckily for him Chiron quickly called everything back to order and everyone returned to their seats. Well now that the introduction is done we can all eat. Chiron then stamped his hooves and shouted out T.O. the gods. To the gods everyone shouted including Naruto before everyone began to fill their plates. Wood nymphs then came out with more platters of food which was filled with the grapes, apples, strawberries, cheese, fresh bread, a whole variety of food. Naruto looked it over and had to admit the food all looked amazing, but there was just something missing. I wonder if they do ramen? He said aloud which was heard by one of the passing wood nymphs. She clicked her fingers and big bowl of ramen filled with noodles and pieces of pork appeared in front of him. He felt like wrapping the wood nymph in a hug and asking her to marry him but he kept his cool and gave her a pleasant thank you to which she appreciated before making her rounds. He poured some of the ramen into a smaller bowl and made sure to have plenty of pork and noodles in it. He was about to chow down before Lu got up and motioned for him to follow him. Before we start eating we take a portion of our food and scrape it into the pot over the fire as an offering to them. The gods love the smell of burnt food so we offer them a small bit of each of ours. Oh okay. Little weird but I won't judge Naruto said getting a small chuckle from those around him. He waited patiently as everyone scraped a portion of their food into the pot, made a small prayer before going back to their seat. Luka was just in front of him had finished his offering by sliding some apple pieces into the pot before Naruto stepped up for his turn. Well I have never done something like this before so here it goes. If you can hear me mom then this offering is for you. If you're anything like me then you will like the smell of ramen. Enjoy he said as he poured some of the ramen in with a few bits of noodles and pork going with it. He turned around and was about to leave before he remembered something both Chiron and Grover said. So he quickly scooped a little bit more into the pot before whispering this is for you too Lady Hestia, just to show that you're not forgotten. The fire underneath the pot suddenly got higher and flickered brightly as if it was saying thank you. He walked back over to the table and sat back next to Luke before he dug into his meal. For the next hour he spoke and idly chatted with Luke about the camp and joked around with two of Luke's brothers the twins Travis and Connor Stoll. Both boys had taken a liking to Naruto when he told them he was a bit of a prankster extraordinaire. He told them about some of the pranks he did back at Yancey and the infamous painting on the Hukage monument. When the boys heard how he painted a giant monument in broad daylight wearing Kill Me Orange both boys burst out laughing and began bowing down to Naruto. Even Luke and some of the other Hermes kids gave a chuckle. Thought they weren't pranking crazy like the twins were. They were still children of Hermes so it just ran through their blood. Eventually dinner ended and everyone made their way down to the amphitheater where the children of Apollo were singing an a cappella version of a variety of songs. He looked around and saw everyone laughing and smiling with marshmallows on the end of a stick in front of a large fire while others were joking around or telling each other stories. 
It was only the first day and already Naruto was beginning to feel at home here. He sensed a presence sit next to him and looked over and saw Annabeth sitting next to him with stars in her eyes and a small notebook and pencil in her hand. I take it you want to know a bit more about my world? He said getting her nodding her head like a mad person which caused him to chuckle. Alright then Naruto said as he began to explain to Annabeth the concept of shinobis and why they exist. That they were the military forces for the hidden villages and that they could wield an energy known as chakra. When she asked whether it was chakra he used to do those feats he did in the dining pavilion Naruto nodded his head. He then went on to describe the five major nations which caused Annabeth to start writing and jotting things down like crazy. That each one was different in landscape like the land of wind was one giant desert while the land of fire was a giant forest. When he said that, some of the wood nymphs and satyrs overheard him and looked over in wonder before they zoned off into a dreamlike state. In each village we have a leader which is known as a cage. In the village I'm from, the village hidden in the leaves Kone or we have the Hakage. The current Hakage is the fifth Hakage Tsunade Senju. She is also a member of the Senin. The leader of your village is a woman? She said a little surprised since most high class leaders were normally men but to hear of a woman who was the leader and was recognized as the strongest in the village slightly surprised her. It got a nod of confirmation from Naruto, what's a Senin? She then asked not recognizing the word. Oh well the Sanin are titles given to a group of shinobi from the Leaf Village. The group was a team that was trained by the 3rd Hakage Hiras and Sarutobi and they played a pivotal role in the Second Shinobi War. In the Second War they fought and managed to survive against a man known as Hanzo the Salamander. He was recognized at the time as the strongest shinobi in the world. At seeing how strong they were he let them live for giving him a good fight before giving them the title of Sanin. The three Sanin are Swan Senju. Jiraiya the Toad Sage and Orgimaru said as he said the last name with venom in his voice which Annabeth caught on to but let it drop. This is incredible Annabeth muttered as she was scribbling away on her notepad. A whole other world. A completely different civilization. It's amazing, there's so much to learn. I take it you like to learn Naruto said which got Annabeth rapidly nodding her head. I love it. As a child of Athena I'm pretty much expected to love to learn. Reading especially. Athena? As in the goddess of wisdom and battle he said getting a nod from Annabeth. That's awesome, thanks. You never know she could be your Olympian parents too since you're unclaimed. Well if I am then I guess that would kinda make me your brother he said causing Annabeth to smile brightly. Before the two could continue their conversation Chiron's voice sounded out through the amphitheater telling everyone it was time to head back to their cabins. As everyone got up Naruto was about to join before a thought quickly appeared in his head. He tapped Annabeth's shoulder getting her attention. Annabeth you were the one who found Grover, Percy and I with Chiron last night right? He asked getting a nod from the girl. Could you tell me who the other girl was? Oh sure, the other girl was Silent Abel Regard. She's a daughter of Aphrodite and the one that helped you back to camp while I helped your friend Percy. She erm, oh she's just over there she said pointing over towards a group of girls that were just leaving the amphitheater. They were all stunning beautiful but Annabeth pointed to the one in the middle of the group. Naruto breathing itched slightly when he saw her. She was by far the most stunning of the group and must have been only a year younger than him since she looked about the same age. Her raven black hair blended in with the night sky perfectly while her dazzling blue eyes seemed to sparkle in the night. Her skin was slightly tan but a little lighter than Annabeth's tan skin. All in all Naruto couldn't take his eyes away from her. Said girl then looked over and spotted him looking in her direction which caused a hint of pink to appear on her face before she gave a small wave to him. Naruto waved back which caused the girls all around Silena to notice and begin to giggle at the little action before the group all left the amphitheater. Come on Naruto he heard as two pairs of arm appeared on his shoulder which belonged to Connor and Travis. Let's head back. We don't want to be out here when those harpies are around they said as they began leading him out with the others from the Hermes cabin. He waved goodbye to Annabeth before he set off. It only took a few minutes before he found himself standing outside the Hermes cabin. It's not much but it's home the twins said together before they led Naruto inside. When he walked in the first thing he noticed was how cramped it was. All the beds and bunk beds had been taken and there were sleeping bags littered all around the room. Here you go Naruto Luke said appearing in front of him handing over a sleeping bag and some toiletries. Pound take this spot. No one's using it yet so you're welcome to it he said pointing over to a spot next to the bunk beds that Connor and Travis slept on. 
Just as Naruto was about to head over Luke tapped his shoulder. Don't forget these. Since you're part of this camp now you're pretty much required to have these he said as he handed over a bright orange shirt with the words Camp Half Blood written in black along with a bare leather necklace. We all have the necklace he said showing his that had five multicolored beads on it. Each bead represents one summer that we have been at camp. The little mark or picture on the bead shows what all the head counselors have agreed was the biggest event of that summer. Naruto nodded in understanding and looked at Lu's necklace. So since you have five beads on yours I guess you have been here for five summers right? He said getting a nod from Luk. That's right. Though if you stay here all year around due to their scent being strong enough that attracts monster or they simply don't have anywhere to go. Annabeth and I are year-rounders so we have stayed here all around for the past five years. I guess you and Annabeth know each other pretty well then he mentioned getting a nod from Luk. Yeah we arrived here together. Guess she is kind of like a little sister to me in a way and we have been through a lot. Especially with Thalia he said whispering at the last part. Thalia Naruto said to himself. He remembered that name from the bus ride from NC Academy. He and Percy had heard Grover mention that name before. Who is this Thalia if you don't mind me asking? I heard Grover mention that name before. When Naruto asked he noticed a dark look gross loose face as his hair slightly covered his eyes and his hands shake slightly next to his sides. It's nothing. It's not a story many like to talk about especially myself, Grover and Annabeth. Let's just say there should have been another that arrived with me and Annabeth but that didn't happen he said as Naruto caught him looking out the window and out at the big tree on top of the hill. When Naruto turned around Luke was across the room. Since both Grover and Luke knew that name and Grover got sad over it while Luke was angry he guessed this Thalia person must have been a friend of theirs. Since they were talking in past tense he guessed something bad must have happened to her. Naruto shook his head at the negative thoughts and went to wash. After he brushed his teeth and washed his face, he changed into a pair of shorts and t-shirt and got in his sleeping bag. He made sure Connor or Travis hadn't done anything to his sleeping bag before he lay down and just looked up at the ceiling. Light out everyone Luke voice said bringing out before the light went off. There were a lot of good nights while others grumble before Naruto shut his eyes. It defiantly was the greatest place to sleep but he made do before he quickly succumbed to sleep. Next day Naruto had woken up fairly early since everyone else in the cabin was still sleeping so he went to bathroom, washed up, got changed with his new half blood t-shirt on before he exited the cabin. The sun had barely just come up so the morning mist around the camp was still there. He saw a few of the wood nymphs heading over towards the dining pavilion, no doubt they were preparing for the morning breakfast. Some of them looked over a little surprised to see him up already but he gave them a friendly smile and wave which they happily gave back. He cracked his neck and did a few warm-up stretches before he went for a morning run around the camp and put his iPod in his ears. As he ran around the camp he looked at his surroundings and marveled at how beautiful it looked under the first rays of the sun. Everything seemed to glimmer and shine especially the big golden cabin. He quickly looked at it away when he feared he would go blind from looking at it for too long. The run around camp didn't take long for him to finish before he wound up in front of the big house. He doubted anyone else was up but was surprised when he saw Chiron trotting up toward the big house with a surprised look on his face. My it is a bit early for you to be up Naruto. Couldn't sleep well? He asked but Naruto shook his head. No believe it or not this is a usual time for me to wake up. Thought I would get some early morning training done before breakfast. Chiron nodded pleased to see how quickly Naruto had adapted to camp. Well then I will leave you to it. Remember when the Conkorn calls out breakfast will be ready he said before he disappeared inside. Naruto watched the centaur go before he made his way around camp and entered the big arena that he was told most went to so they could train. He entered and found the place was a lot like the Chunin exam arena in a way. The training ground was a large oval shape with wooden dummies planted all over the place. There were wooden stand wrapped around it where people could most likely watch. He guessed it was used for other events due to how many could be seated in the stands. Well let's get started he said before he called out his patented shadow clone jutsu and 40 clones appeared in front of him before he got into a fighting stance. Alright guys come at me with everything you got he said making the come on motion with his hands. Yes boss they all saluted before they all charged at him. Two hours later Luke made his way to the arena where Chiron had sent him to retrieve Naruto since the Conkorn was about to blow any minute. The taller blonde was surprised to see Naruto had already woken up and gone out for a bit of morning training which left him a little impressed at the dedication. 
However when he walked into the arena and saw Naruto fighting over a dozen copies of himself his jaw was left slightly open. He was amazed at the feats these shinobi could do and watching Naruto fighting hand to hand with them all and winning was amazing. Luke realized then that Naruto may have just become a strong contender for the camp's strongest demigod. When Naruto beat the last clone of the third wave he spotted Luke watching him and figured it was time to end the morning training so he wiped the sweat of his brow before he walked over. Morning he said as he chuckled at Luke's gulps mag lock. How? Naruto tapped his nose. Shinobi trick he said before the two walked off. The morning from then on went pretty smoothly. When he got back to the Hermes cabin he took a quick shower getting rid of the sweat and smell he attained from training. He also rinsed his orange shirt before drying it with a quick wind jutsu which made the shirt as good as new. Breakfast went smoothly except for the part where everyone heard Luke ask him about the copies he made. This got another information gathering session from Annabeth who had a brand new notepad in her hands. He told her about the technique before telling her would tell her more later to which agreed to. After breakfast where Naruto ate enough for four people he went with the Hermes cabin for a Greek lesson. He was surprised when he found Annabeth was the teacher but Connor and Travis told him she was the best at speaking and talking Greek since she was a daughter of Athena. When the lesson got underway Naruto was amazed that he could understand everything in the Greek textbook and marveled at finally being able to read properly which caused many in the room to chuckle. Half the reason he hated reading the past was due to not being able to read the text in books but now he might just give it a chance. After an interesting lesson to which Annabeth told him he did well for his first time as two exited the classroom. But before they could both leave Grover came running up to them. Naruto, Chiron wanted me to let you know Percy is awake and is at the big house. Naruto's eyes widened slightly before he grinned and made his way towards the big house. Grover and Annabeth followed too. When he arrived he saw Percy was sitting in the same seat he was the day before with Chiron now back in his wheelchair. However Mr. D didn't look too happy since his eyes looked like they were on fire with purple wisps coming out from them. The camp director saw Naruto coming over and gave the blonde a quick nod which Naruto did back. Jeez Percy what did you do to piss Mr. D off? He asked coming up being the black haired boy and getting a jump of surprise from Percy whose eyes widened when he saw his blonde friend. Naruto he said leaping in the chair to give his friend a quick hug. Thank god you're okay. What is going on? I'm so confused and calm down Percy Naruto said patting Percy on the shoulder. I know it's a lot to take in but everything that Chiron and Mr. D have said is the truth. You mean the gods being real and my mom being? Yeah it's all real. I'm sorry about your mom Percy he said. Percy looked down obviously trying to keep his tears at bay. The others had a look of sympathy especially Grover since he felt like it was his fault and that he should have protected them better while MR looked like he didn't really care. Naruto saw Annabeth and decided to quickly change the topic. Oh Percy this is Annabeth. She's the one who found us and brought you to camp. Percy looked up and Naruto could see a small shade of pink appear on Percy's face causing Naruto to inwardly smirk. It was silent for a few seconds as Naruto saw Annabeth gray eyes scanning Percy over as if she was trying to figure out the best way to take him down. You drill when you sleep she said ending the silence causing Percy to face fault and Naruto to burst out laughing at how blunt she was. Grover and Chiron also chuckled while Percy looked like his pride had just taken a bit of a hit. Er I'm sorry was all he managed to say before he decided to just stay quiet as Chiron who now leapt out of the wheelchair causing Percy's eyes to go all bug-eyed. Come Percy I'll take you on a tour of the camp he said as Annabeth then sprinted off along with Grover. However Naruto decided he would go with Percy just to make the boy feel better and so he had another familiar face with him. Chiron took them on the same route Grover had taken them the day before. Naruto had already seen it all and was either daydreaming away or watching the other campers go about their day. He listened in when Percy claimed to have seen something move the curtain from the attic window but Chiron quickly shot it down to it being nothing which Naruto found a little suspicious but let it go for now. After about half an hour of Percy asking question after question they eventually got to the cabins. When they got there Naruto looked around and saw that a tall well built girl about his age was staring at Percy as if he was fresh meat. She wore a red bandana on her head and had straggly brown hair. Over her orange shirt she wore a camouflage jacket. The girl was lean but muscular. A lot more muscular than all the other girls he had seen around here. But Naruto had to admit she did look pretty. He thought she must have been one of the more rough and tumble kind of girls that isn't afraid to lay out a few punches and receive them back if the few old scars on her arms were any indication. 
She was standing outside the red cabin with barbed wire on the roof. If Naruto could remember what Grover told him the other day that was the Ares cabin therefore making that girl a daughter of Ares. Ah oh, and this is where you will be staying until you are claimed Chiron said as he led Percy towards the Hermes cabin. Naruto was about to follow before he saw the stables just a little way off and decided to go check it out. I'm heading off, I'll see you later Percy he called getting a timid nod from Percy. Percy knew he couldn't expect Naruto to stay with him all the time and was grateful for sticking with him this far. As Percy walked toward the Hermes cabin where he saw Annabeth was waiting for him and Chiron Naruto made his way over to the stables. The stables were made of wood that was white in color though some of the wood had clearly begun to fade while it also had a mix of brick and stone. There was a bit of hay and vegetables lying over the place so it did look cleaner than most stable he had gone to which were not that many. When he walked in he looked in amazement when he saw a long line of horse pens which housed the most beautiful creature he had seen to date. The Pegasi varied in color from white, brown and gray. Their wing folded up on their sides just like that of a bird but they looked magnificent. He walked down the line and stopped in front of a beautiful pegasus with snow white fur and wings and had an almost silver looking mane along its neck. When he got close to the pen it was in it moved its head and looked right at him, its brown eyes staring deeply into his sapphire ones. Naruto wasn't sure who he but he felt like the horse was studying, making sure he was not a threat to it and that it wouldn't hurt it. A little shakily Naruto extended his arm out towards the pegasus and outstretched his fingers. The pegasus didn't move for about half a minute as it looked at his fingers before slowly it trotted towards him. Naruto held in his breath when it got close until the pegasus's head now grazed the tips of his fingers. Light and carefully he put his palm onto the pegasus's head and gently stroked the animal. The pegasus obviously liked the feeling since it whinnied a little and had an almost peaceful look across its face and eyes. Naruto was amazed at how comfortable the animal felt around him. It was like the animal just had an automatic trust in him. Beautiful isn't she a voice called out causing Naruto's head to whip around and eyes widened slightly when none other than the girl he had been trying to talk to all day yesterday was standing there looking towards him and the pegasus with a small smile on her face. She walked over and patted the pegasus on the neck. Yeah she is. She is quite possible the most amazing animal I have ever seen Naruto said getting a nod in agreement from Silena. I'm surprised she has taken to you so quickly. It took me a few weeks before she felt comfortable to be around me. Guess you have a way with animals she said as she gazed at Naruto who blushed slightly at her stare. Maybe. I guess she just recognizes I am no threat to her he said getting a satisfied nod from Silena. I'm Naruto by the way. Silena giggled. Oh I know who you are. You have been quite the talk of the camp especially with your little display last night. I'm Silena Beauregard, daughter of Aphrodite. It nice to meet you he said sticking his hand out to which Silena quickly shook along with a little giggle escaping from her mouth. You were the one who found me on the hill that night weren't you? He said getting a confirming nod from Silena. I just want to thank you for helping me. I was pretty out of it with Mr. Beefcake whacking me in the chest. You're welcome she said politely getting a small hint of pink appear on her cheeks from the thanks. Naruto looked her over and saw she was wearing almost the same as the day before except her skirt was now light blue and she had silver colored sandals on her feet. Her nails and toenails were colored a light blue to match her skirt and her eyes. One thought was going through Naruto's head at this point in time. The girls in the leaf village have nothing on her. At the same time Silena was looking him over from the corner of her eyes. She saw that the camp hat blood shirt fitted him perfectly and framed his lean but muscular frame perfectly and was impressed with the black long shorts he was wearing and the black converses. I can see why so many of my sisters are falling for him already she thought. I do hope he isn't a son of Aphrodite. That would break a lot of hearts. Both then caught each other staring at one another before they quickly turned their heads hiding the pink on their cheeks before they both let out a little laugh. Naruto saw the necklace on around her neck and saw the one bead on it that was colored blue. You have been here one year I guess from the bead he said motioning to her necklace. Yeah I came here last summer when I was 12. I spent about a week in the Hermes cabin before my mom claimed me. When most people look at me they just see this pretty girl who is a daughter of Aphrodite and that all I do is look in the mirror and talk about clothes and love and stuff. So I tried to branch myself out from that. I took a Pegasus riding lesson which I found I excelled out. I'm pretty confident in saying I'm one of the best Pegasus riders in the camp. If you like I could teach you how to ride one she said tucking a strand of hair behind her ear a little nervously. 
Yes, sure, I'd really like that, Naruto said back stuttering a little at first and causing a big smile to cross Alina's face. The Pegasus was looking between the two and if Naruto didn't know any better he could have sworn she was smirking. However before the two could talk any more a blast that sounded like a small explosion sounded out through the air. Both Naruto and Silena looked at each other before they headed out of the stables to see what the commotion was. I hope you all liked the video. And if you all want the next part of this video please like the video and comment 3 hearts. Please subscribe to my channel so whenever I upload a video you will notify.